Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a dandelion. We're going to be doing it step by step from start to finish. And I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. <laughs> Chat during a live show. We just got somebody ring the doorbell, like literally when we first started. So I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's go uh, see who's at the door and uh, get started here. <laughs> Alrighty, so I've got my canvas here. I am going to spray it. Go ahead and show my palette there too, so I can go over my colors while you're seeing who's at the door. They're probably gone now, but you know, who knows? Um, <laughs> it's funny, just like one little thing like that can throw you off completely. Okay, I'm going to be doing this a little bit more on the detailed side. I have another tutorial on dandelions that I did uh, about a year or two ago that has two or three dandelions, I can't remember. And um, it's a it's a more beginner friendly one. So this one's gonna be a little bit more advanced than that. We're gonna go, we're gonna do a little bit more detail with everything and were they gone? No, they were gone. Ah, uh, got it. Oh, stickers. That was really important. Here, pull them out. Let's show the stickers <laughs> that we got. <laughs> I'm so glad they interrupted our show for that. All right. Nine, nine by 12 inch canvas panel today we're going to be using. This is a Belgian linen Frederick's canvas. So thank you to them. They're our canvas sponsor. They're awesome. That's smart. Um, our brushes are going to be, uh, we're going to use a few different kinds. Uh, they may be a little bit like more specialty brushes. If you don't have those, just use what you've got that's similar enough, you know. Um, I'm going to be using a large flat for some of the black background blending. I might pull out my filbert. Not sure if we're going to need that. Yeah, there's my new stickers. Is that a good rose? You just throw this here if it doesn't No. That's all right. Um, And then I, uh, let's see. So for the actual dandelions themselves, we're going to want to have like some sort of a very small um, liner brush of some sort. Cause those fine, the hairs are super, super fine or the little fibers or whatever they are, little seed pods. Um, so I'm gonna try kind of speeding things up with the Filbert Grainier cause they have super fine um, hairs. Here, I've got an eighth inch and a quarter inch, um, and I also have a 10 aught fan that's the soft fan. So uh, we may use these for part of that, but but most of the detail work in the dandelions, I figure we're probably gonna have to use an, an actual liner. So we've got an 18 aught short liner, super fine. I don't even know if you can see how fine those are. Really, really thin, um, and that'll help us get those super thin lines um, on the little, uh, seed pods. And then I've got a 13 aught and a number one round for some of the larger parts of the plant. And then a number four round for like the stem and some of the bigger areas. So those will be our main brushes for the actual dandelion. Now for the background, we're going to want, since it's got that kind of bokeh effect of the little circles and things, um, we can do it a couple different ways. Uh, if you've got this foam pouncers, you can use those in different sizes. Um, I've also got a large round sponge that I'll probably use to blend out some of the background to give that kind of soft fuzzy look. Um, and then uh, another way to do the round dots is to uh, use a deer foot stippler. So if you've got one, it's already in the circular shape and then we can kind of use that. I kind of prefer these to the sponges because it's a, the sponges are faster, um, but the deer foot stipplers give you a little bit more control over how much paint you're laying down. And also they give you that kind of soft blendy edge that we're going to go for. So uh, when we use the um, foam pouncers, uh, we're, we're going to need a brush, like a blender of some sort to kind of blend out those edges a little bit. So I've got a mini mop, a number 12 round blender and a, um, filbert. And so I'll show you kind of the different ways of doing that. Uh, we'll do, we'll kind of go over, over a couple different ways of doing this background. 
All right, um, our colors are fairly simple palette today. We've got uh, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Burnt Orange. That's pretty much optional color, but it's a really lovely kind of orangey brown. Um, this one is Transparent Yellow Oxide. If you don't have it, just use regular yellow oxide or yellow ochre. Uh, cadmium Yellow Light, Cobalt Teal, Thalo Blue Green Shade, Ultramarine Blue, and Quinacridone Magenta. And then I've got Unbleached Titanium, which I'm not really sure I'm going to even need. Maybe a little bit, but not much. Uh, titanium White in both Heavy Body and Fluid. And then this is the Fluid um, Zinc White. Those will be for our um, dots, our spots and things. And then this is a whole bunch of glazing medium. This is a gloss glazing liquid that I like to use. So, well, look how blown out my colors are. I hope that's, look at, Mark's not watching. I'm watching. Okay. Mm, this was, this was, look at how, look at the difference. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's blown out over here, too. Oh, well. Our white balance is a little, or not white balance, but our exposure is a little off on here tonight. Hopefully it won't make that much difference. If I knew what to do, I'd do it. <laughs> yeah, well, you can't really do it unless you mess with the camera settings, so but I don't want to mess with it right now. Other than saying, oh man, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> not a whole lot you can do, yeah. No. Okay, so I'm getting my sponge wet here, just damp, you want it, um, to squeeze all of the moisture out of it once you get it damp, but you just need a little bit wet there. And I'm going to spray my canvas, just one good spray there. I'm gonna spray my paints again, because they're, don't want them to dry out. And I'm gonna grab my large brush here. And what I'm looking at in my photograph is, I'm looking at not the dots, but the colors around the dots. So I'm looking at those dark, dark like up in this corner we've got the dark blues going into some purple here we've got some orangey colors around here and then we've got these yellow dots but in between we've got kind of more of a muddy color so we'll probably put in um kind of a probably use our yellow oxide for this area down here we may even add um, some of the other colors to it um some pink or something like that because there i see some pink tones in here and then um all this area up here is like that cobalt teal color with a little bit of the darker color around the edges. So let's go ahead and start with our lighter tones so it'll be easier to blend those out. So I'm going to grab some of the yellow oxide here and a little bit of my glazing medium and some white. Okay. And then I'm going to grab some yellow too so it's like a little bit like brighter version of the yellow that we're gonna put on top. It looks pretty good. So what we're gonna to need to do here, so we've got this kind of damp, and um, I'm gonna grab a little bit of glazing medium. That'll just make sure that the water that's on our canvas is not gonna um, make our paint not bind well. So I'm gonna work fairly quickly with this large brush, and I'm just going to blend it out so that I have this kind of feathered edge. So I'm gonna start where I want my color to be brightest, down at the bottom, and pull up, and then feather out that edge. So once the paint's mostly out of my brush, I'm just gonna like pull it up and try to get kind of a soft, blendy edge up here, and that way we won't have to fight that edge later when we add more color. Okay, so that's about what we want to do there. I'm going to grab some of the burnt orange. What a pretty color is it? And I'm mixing it in with my yellow here. I was mostly out of that yellow, so I'm just kind of mixing it over the top of what we had there. I'm going to blend that into what we already have right here down toward the bottom. And then try to get a good like spot there. That's a really good spot. And... You see where I'm getting my like lines, I can go back through here once I get most of the paint off and I can kind of just lightly blend back and forth. So I'm probably not going to need this actually after all this work. This larger brush is working really well. I really like these brushes. They're not too thick, so they don't hold too much paint. So um, a lot of times these larger brushes, they'll be super thick and you can't get these soft blends with them if they're too thick. So um all right, I'm gonna grab some quinacridone magenta now. And I grabbed a little bit of ultramarine blue too. So, 
I'm trying to go over that color now. The thing I don't want to do is start messing with this if it's starting to dry. So I can feel that this yellow paint is starting to get a little bit sticky. So I'm going super light over this just to kind of try to blend that out just a little bit. It's okay if it's not fully blended because we're going to be adding a lot of other colors over the top. But um, it'll just help us a little bit if we, if we do. So I need to clean this out now. And I'm just going to grab some water and like dab it on my paper towel to kind of clean it instead of mudding up my whole water jar. Okay, then I'm going to grab some of the cobalt teal and um, phthalo blue and some of the burnt sienna. More of that white. Here we go. Not a lot of white, just enough to kind of see what tone we've got going on. So if it's not turquoisey enough yet, so I want to add a little bit more of that burnt sienna. This the burnt sienna turns the thalo blue into kind of a really pretty turquoise. See so like that color there. Okay. Get a little bit more white and some of my glazing medium. And I don't want to add too much glazing medium because I don't want it to make my color super transparent, but this will just help the color go on better. And again, it'll help it blend. Okay, so right in there, I'm going to get a little bit more of my ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta just on that one corner of my brush. And I'm going to dab it in there where it's meeting that phthalo blue. And these colors have to be kind of wet so I'm working from the bottom up to where I want these to blend so that I have time to blend these don't spend a ton of time mixing your colors and if you if it takes you a while to mix colors you may want to mix them before you start working so that you can just dab into the color that you need and don't have to stop to mix because if you wait for this to dry it's a little bit harder for it to blend Okay, so that's good there. And then I'm going to grab the cobalt teal and more of my white. And I'm just going to use whatever's left of my brush here. And this is going to end up a little bit lighter than we're doing, but like I said, we're going for the color in between. We're not going for the color on top, so you have to look kind of past the obvious and see what color, what's going on underneath and behind everything. Okay, yeah. I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow in my cobalt teal. Which So that's this color that's going to be meeting right here. Look at how pretty that green is. Which brush are you using right now? This is the two number inch? two. Yes, yeah, the two inch. Sorry, yeah, no, number two. Two inch. Two inch. Two inch. It's called a mot modeler. Motler. I'm not sure how huh, you pronounce that. Interesting. Um, yeah. So it's like a two inch paintbrush right okay. but these ones they're like us I, I was mentioning before that usually like well especially like these ones with the hog bristles are a lot thicker um and they won't get the soft blends for you and um a paintbrush will also be quite a bit bit thicker this mm -hmm. one's actually kind of thin for a paintbrush but like a regular paintbrush you're going to have a lot thicker. A lot you more can bristles. See, yeah, a lot more bristles. You can see how much thinner this one is. Mm -hmm. So that gives you a little bit more control over okay. how much paint is laid down for this kind of an application. It just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm just where this green and yellow are meeting, doing that. You can see over here it's starting to dry. I'm not really worried too much about this. Mainly just want to kind of get some color on here. That makes sense. It's a little trickier when you've got a lot of colors going into one another, especially when you've got a color like purple and yellow that you do not want to meet, you know, because they'll create a muddy color. So um, just have to kind of work our way around here. Okay, so this is where this could come in handy. So let's go ahead and try this. This may be too tacky. I don't know. We'll just, we'll see how it goes. If it's too tacky, we'll be able to find, we'll see real close, real soon because the color will start to lift off. So I'm going to use this and just blend back up into this green and that'll just kind of help 
soften that. Yeah, that looks good. Let's see how that's working. Now, see, that's lifting. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you can tell right away if it's going to blend or if it's lifting. If your color underneath is dry enough, it'll, it'll blend over the top. Um, but, yeah, I'm getting some lifting here. So I need to just give this to Mark and let him dry it or dry it off completely before we do anything else. I should have probably gone just a little bit thicker with my paint. If I'd gone a little bit thicker, it'd give me a little bit more drying time, but I was stopping and talking. And and there are a lot of colors that, were, um, that we were mixing too. So um, what you can do is do just like yellow and green, like your yellow and greens first over the entire canvas, and then add back in your um, other colors maybe bring your yellow up a little bit where you're going to put that orange color. Um, but with acrylics, we can layer and we're going to be layering all these other colors on top. So this initial layer is not as important as it might be if we were going to be leaving it, you know, and being um, as is. So we've got lots of more stuff that we're going to be doing to it. Clean that guy out there. Man, these sponges soak up so much paint. Um, if you are interested in seeing what we're going to be painting next month in June, um, this weekend we've got our last painting of the month we're going to be doing a beach scene with some rocks and some um crashing waves on the seashore it's gonna be really fun and then um i've got my new schedule up for june 2020 so if you want to see that um i've got the um the videos all scheduled if you click on my name or my photo it'll take you to that page and then if you go down in the description to this video there'll be links to my social media and then on my social media I've also got um, the Patreon videos that we'll be doing so on Instagram and Facebook um, uh, we just posted today the upcoming Patreon videos too so if you're interested in any of that you can see okay so I think yeah I'll let, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to use this to add some of this green here I'm going to get some of the white and I, I think I'm out of cobalt teal but that's good enough. And I think I'm just going to try to kind of blend this out a little bit. This color. Blend it into all of this. Give a second coat on some of it. It's not looking like it's dry all the way. It's not? It's lifting right here. Just may not have. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. It's like a rainbow. Okay, so I'm going to grab some of this. And I still have the green on there, so it'll tone it and make it a little bit brown, which is fine because that's that is actually under some of my color colors here there is kind of a brownish tone I'm gonna get a little bit of the quinacridone magenta add a little bit of that in here and then where I want it to blend I'll just kind of find a clean spot and you just need to be sure you're not wiping off your paint so that's one of the things with these sponges you have to watch for so that color was wiping off there and just add a little bit more paint and then I can't really mess with it too much because it's drying already. Do you need me to dry it. it again? No, it's fine. Somebody asked, how do you fix lifting? You just let it dry completely and then put another layer on top. It's There's really not much you can do. You can put thicker paint on and make it stick, but 
um, you have to be super careful and kind of know how the paint's going to react. So um, I do that sometimes, like if I don't want to have to, you know, go back in and add more. I'm going to add a little bit darker purple up here. And then I'm really adding more this color than I meant to. Get a little bit of that ultramarine blue. Go back over here and kind of push that back a little bit because it's kind of turning into a lot of purple up there. Okay, so that's good. And then I just want to tint this upper half. And this using the sponge kind of allows you to get that kind of soft fuzzy edge a little bit easier than using a brush. So. So I'm using it so like right here where it's not blended out, I'm going to grab some white and just blend over that a little bit. And I'm going right on the inside of where I want it to blend. So if I want it to blend right here, I'm going to start over here and blend into that. You don't ever want to start blending on the spot where you want it to blend because that's going to be your brightest area where you set your brush down or your your sponge in this case down that first spot where you set it down is going to wear where your brightest color goes and then if you don't if you want that color to be subtle then it's not going to it's going to end up being that brighter color that you've got okay i think that's pretty good and i'm doing deliberately doing these circular motions so that when we put our circles on top it'll kind of blend in and be look like we meant to do that it'll be part of the background get a little bit more of that quinacridone magenta there so we got an equipment question mm -hmm. do you like your Go a little bit darker here what do you like your blue rubber brush cleaning thingy uh okay i have mixed feelings about those i do like it in this jar I it did not work with my other jars so it did not stick to plastic so that's why I never used it before but I do I do think it it helps some um yeah some uh there they sent they sent me a while back they sent me a bunch of those pucks and they sent me a like a water jar and stuff the water jar was way too small for my needs um but if you, you know, if you're not using as much water as, as I am, then probably be okay. But I just, I didn't find it big enough. So, but yeah, the, the little pucks, they, they, they do all right. Okay. So that is lifting right there again too. And that could be that I didn't have enough glazing medium in my brush or too much water. So here I'm going to just sponge over it and pounce on that paint on, like I said, thicker paint. I can kind of sponge it on and just leave it and not rub it. The rubbing is what is taking it off. This is maybe dry enough. Just have to be real careful. It looks like you're not putting a lot of I'm not. I'm there. barely touching it to the canvas here. Okay, so I think that's about all I can do right here. I'm going to let Mark take that again. It's and it's okay if it doesn't look real good. Like it's not blended, but we're going to be covering over everything with can you, can you just rinse that out for me? Um, we're going to be covering over everything with those little dots and things. So it's better to make it darker than it needs to be. Um, <clears throat> we mainly just want to make sure that those dark colors that are underneath and in between the dots are dark enough and that they're kind of in the right general family, you know. So I'm washing my hands off. Uh, one, you just don't want chemicals sitting on your skin, um, even though they are technically um, safe. Um, and two, if I was to touch my painting with these, with paint on my hands, acrylics are sticky. They dry kind of sticky. Um, not, they'll, you know, you can touch them. They're not going to stick to anything, but they will stick to themselves and they'll stick to glass. So that's why you don't ever like frame them under glass. Um, and if you, you don't ever like put two paintings face to face that are dry, um, even after they're dry, they will, um, they can stick to each other and pull, pull paint off of one another. 
I've had that happen. It's not fun. Um, so, uh, if it's, if it's on our hand, it'll do the same thing. It'll, it, that little acrylic film that's on our fingers will just stick right to the canvas and it'll deposit itself onto the canvas. And then we'll, yeah. No bueno. Okay. I'll throw on some lotion on my hand here, sorry. I've got a spot of eczema on my knuckle here that gives me trouble from time to time. I wash in my hands so much that I'm always kind of fighting in that little spot trying to pop up. Okay, so I'm gonna wash, or I'm gonna start these in the water and get them going, and I think I'm gonna clean off my palette because it's all kind of messed up right now. I'll give us a clean spot to work on and put out some fresh paint. These ones that I've already used up, used up all of my regular titanium white. This is a glass palette, so I'm just scraping off the fresh paint. Using a little bit of water on it helps it come off. Everybody watching you scrape? Yeah, I've been talking about my hand and wash my hand off and put some mm. lotion on my hand. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's, really, it's been exciting. You missed a lot. They're getting their money's worth. <laughs> this is what happens when you do a live stream. <laughs> this all would be edited out if we, so you are welcome. <laughs> all of this would have been. You would have never seen that. You would have never seen any of that. That's right. But we're real here. <laughs> we, wa what? we wash our hands. We wash our hands. We do. Okay. I don't think I'm going to need more thalo. The cobalt tail is going to be mainly, mainly for our dots there. I'm going to put some more water out. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's good and dry. So we'll start with our larger dots and um, going to grab some glazing medium and a little bit of my zinc white. The zinc white is transparent, so, but um, just a little bit of that white will help it be a little bit, a little bit more opaque. We can even use a little bit of titanium white if we need it way opaque like if we're covering over a really dark area. So we'll just start over down here. We'll put in some our large dots. And I'm doing it deliberately a little bit bigger than what my size is here. I want it a little bit bigger. And then what I can do is take a slightly damp mop brush and just kind of dab off that edge so that it blends out and softens up okay and i can see that that paint is already is starting to trying to lift so i just need to be careful here really ideally you probably want to wait a couple hours at least before you do this because that paint underneath is still pretty tacky and we're using thinned out paint on top and it can cause issues so I can't more paint to stick. I'm just dabbing it a little bit harder there. Okay, there we go. So, this is such a pretty color. I'm going to use a little bit of white in this one. They get lighter as they come over here. So I'm going to use some more white here. And just kind of varying the size and height of these. And they're actually doing a pretty good job of kind of being sort of fuzzy because I'm moving it around. 
but if you see any hard lines, you just want to tap those off. So this paint is this brush will kind of lift off that paint too. So you just have to kind of be careful where you use it. And then I can go back in and dab in in the center. I need it darker. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's try it over here. This may or may not work. We'll see. Let's see what the yellow does on top of this blue. It's all right. So I'm getting all these like little fuzzies. So over here, what I might do is use this brush. So I'm going to grab dry. Do not wet this down. And see how I can tap that off. And just kind of fuzzing out those edges. Okay, so now when I go to use this, if I go to use it, a deer foot stippler, I'm going to grab a little bit of that cobalt teal because these ones up here start getting green. I'm going to just kind of run it. I can dab it on and then I can kind of run it in a circle. And it's going to make kind of a little bit softer circles for me than these will. But if you, you know, if you're um, circle challenged and you can't get them round, you know, or the right, you know, size, then by all means use the other, you know. It's a thing. I mean, you know, there, there, you know, it can be difficult to get a perfect circle. So if that's, if you're like trying it and your circles are not coming out, you know, the way you want them to, then you can, you can switch back let's, over to one Let's of these. be clear. We're not shape shaming anybody. Shape shaming. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> Whatever shape you make is okay. Exactly. We accept all shapes. All shapes. Sizes, exactly. Yeah. Circle challenged. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> okay. So, and then I'm going to do, I'm just going to do some that are very like soft and subtle that aren't actually kind of defined all that well because there's a lot of areas in here that are kind of blended out so some of them are kind of overlapping and things just wanting to kind of soften up this whole back area here and this is cobalt teal that I'm using I still had a little bit of the yellow in my brush but I found it was a little bit too bright over here I didn't really like that tone that it was doing so so you can see how I can kind of do that and then just softly fuzz out those edges so these brushes give you just a little bit more control I feel like than the round brushes even though the round brushes are giving you a perfect shape I can grab it and do a few dots with the round brush around dealing here in that brush. You know what they meant. I think they knew what I meant, hopefully. Is Princeton our Dealey supplier also? Yes, thank you to Princeton, our brush sponsor, yes. And Dealey, brush and Dealey. Dealey. No, they don't, Provi they don't they, make these. They don't provide Dealey's? No. Okay. I don't know. They might make them. I, I, don't, I haven't seen them, though. Okay, I just messed that one up completely because I was messing with it while I was trying to dry. So you don't want to do that. If you're going to blend it out, you, you've you got to do it immediately. You can't wait. They dry too quickly when you do it this thin. Okay. Let's get a big old green circle right here. So I'm going to get some of that. Cobalt teal with some yellow on my bra, my sponge here. Make that bright green. Also grabbing glazing medium, and then you can use a paper towel to kind of help you regulate too, because you you really don't want a lot of paint on here when you're doing this. And then this is what um, one of the other things. If you don't have like a fancy mop brush like I was using here, um, you can also use just a regular brush that's kind of slightly damp 
and just dab, dab off that wet edge just a little bit. I'm even kind of going in the middle and kind of smoothing out that paint a little bit. But I was kind of trying to keep it in that circular pattern, and you don't really want your brush strokes to show, so if it's lifting too much, you may have to try doing something different. You want it to kind of be smooth, okay? Somebody asked, when do you want a lot of paint on your pouncer? Mm, never really. I mean, well, I mean, if you were, were like really wanting to make a solid circle, then you would want a lot of paint on here. But if we're not making a solid circle, we're making these kind of transparent ones. So we need to keep our paint super transparent. Okay. But yeah, I mean, that's really the only time I could think of that you would add a lot of, you know, but even then you, you really are almost always going to be lifting off most of the color off of your you know, testing it on a paper towel first before you go on to the canvas or whatever. So there's a big one going off the edge here. Just trying to figure out how big it's going to be and just kind of... And I'm using just titanium or just uh, zinc white here. This. Okay, just let that set. I think I need a couple more things in my hands here. <laughs> Can she fit anything else? <laughs> Don't stop, know. stop showing off that you're a pro, <laughs> an expert. <laughs> the amateurs don't, don't like know. that. I don't know about that. <laughs> okay. The mom skills are coming out. Yeah, the mom skills. Exactly. Multitasking and it's fine. Okay, so just going to I'm use this to create some soft blendy circles that are very, very faint. And this is mainly just to kind of try to soften up this whole back area here. And I'm going to use one right here. This one I want to make sure I'm really softening up those outer edges. So I'm kind of going, to going back over. I kind of laid it down in the middle and then I'm going to just very softly like using this to blend out my edges a little bit and it's okay if they're not a perfect circle like you can have some that are kind of looking like semi-circles some of these will kind of look like slightly um, half formed or you know you're only seeing like part of the circle so that's okay too If we do this right, when we dry these, they'll they'll kind of show through the colors underneath. And if we need to, we can tint them a little bit too. So like over here, I can tint it. Uh, let me tint it with a little bit of the yellow. And that'll change the whole tone of it. This little corner here is just not wanting to stick. Like the paint keeps lifting off. doesn't matter what I'm putting on it. That and that could be a priming issue with the canvas itself and not anything that we're doing. Which that happens sometimes. Probably meant that I didn't have enough water in my in my um or not water, um enough of the glaze in my brush and initially when I put it down here, that color. Gonna, I'm just using the unble or the burnt orange with my white hair and lots of the glazing medium. So 
So I wet this down, but I want to dry it out completely because these can get kind of sloppy when they get wet. So I want to switch to a little bit smaller brush now. And let this dry completely before I use it again. Oh, I just said I don't want it wet. Oh, I'm talking and not paying dipped attention to what I mm -hmm, <laughs> dipped it in the water. Mark loves it when I do stuff like that. <laughs> so the the circle-y thingies that you're making, are they mm -hmm. just like lighting refractions? or what Yeah, it's, a, it's an effect that happens with a camera when they... Um, yeah. When it goes out of focus. Yeah, there's there's a way to do it. I don't know how to do it, but yeah. Um, the bokeh. Bokeh effect, it's called. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. But typically it is something in the background that's out of focus. Yeah, and it's something about the light, um, mm -hmm. the way the light's catching the. But we don't want to get all sciencey on you. Right, I don't know. <clears throat> Because we have no clue. I don't know exactly why it does it. Okay, so all through here, this area is just mainly kind of light, light blue. There's not a lot of the little circle-y things happening. So... I'm going to get a little bit more of that think white and just kind of go through here and just soften this up and kind of go back over it with them, kind of scumbling some lighter color over the top of that darker background in the circular motion so I'm getting that kind of soft blendy effect. I can grab some of the green. This is cobalt teal and thala blue here that I'm using with the zinc white and I'm going to grab some of the green up here. Use this color up in here. We might get some little hair pieces come off. That's normal. Because we're scrubbing so hard, it's just breaking off some of the little hairs. These brushes will last quite a while, though. They will, <laughs> they'll work until they're nubs. I've, I've got several of these that have gotten worn down to little nubs, and I still used them for, you know, a while. Okay, so... It, at this point, we're going to just be having to pay attention to the dryness of the paint underneath because we don't want to go over and up, up a, spot, a spot that's drying. So we just have to kind of keep an eye on it. This one see, feels a little bit tacky, so I don't want to mess with it right now. Get a little bit of yellow. That cobalt or that cadmium yellow really has a good tinting for a, a yellow. It doesn't take much. Okay, so here I'm just wanting to kind of blend out this area that I didn't get to blend before. I'm going to use a little bit of the burnt orange and mix it with that green. It's going to make kind of a brownish green, kind of a dull neutral green, but that's kind of what's happening where it meets here. And I want to add a little bit of the white, so I'm getting a little bit lighter version of it. There we go. So it's a little bit more on the red red side, or the orange side, than the 
blue side, or teal side I should say, where we added the teal to the burnt orange, so. We've got a little bit more of that than we probably need, but our, our flower is going to be all covering this whole area. So only a little bit of this is going to peek through, but we're going to be uh, wanting like, a, you know, kind of a good darker color underneath there to play against. So I'm probably going to have to stop here and let all of this dry really well before we do much more. But I just want to make sure that I've got this area ready to go so that we can start on our flower. So this area for sure is kind of looking muddy and weird. So I'm going to get my sponge here. Some of the zinc white and some of the cadmium yellow. Maybe get a little bit of the titanium white to soften it up. I'm going to use this down here. Use it all along here. Make sure that that background, the first layer that we've done, is dry. And this is still wet, so we can kind of play with it too, and it'll kind of lift off a little bit of what we've got, but we've got enough color underneath that it's going to work for us. So you just have to kind of play, know your paint as you're doing it, and kind of feel it out as, as you do this, and Make sure that you don't add too much too quickly or too many layers too quickly, I should say, because it can cause problems, but that one's dry enough. And I'm just kind of using variations of the same colors. So, you know, we had the yellows, maybe add a little bit of the orange to the yellow that burnt orange to the yellow over here where the, we're going over the top of the burnt orange. So we kind of get a, like a variation of the color that's underneath. This is actually working pretty good. I'm just have very little paint on here and it's it's giving me good fuzzy edges, so I'm gonna continue with it. Oops, see right there. Dang it. That little spot. Just gonna put a small is the yellow oxide here. Okay. Okay, so I've got a spot here that didn't cover. I'm going to try to match that color as much as I can. So I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow and a little bit of my pink there gonna go in kind of dark with it or kind of thick I should say with it okay totally not pain related mm -hmm. but but definitely chat related okay what was the herb we had last night in our soup confetti cilantro confetti cilantro but it's also called um Coriander. Coriander. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, back to painting. 
Man, it was very, very concentrated wow, too. Wow, it was. A little bit went a long way. It was yummy. All right, so new brush. This is the same brush I've been using just, just to clean. Actually, I was using the little stippler a minute ago, but this is the Deerfoot stippler here. I was using the pouncer a minute ago, I should say. Okay, so that area is really bugging me, and I don't really know exactly how to fix it, because it's not one to stick down paint, but it looks better, but it's still kind of looking very, like, obvious right there. this. Use some water to dab it off the paint that was there. Okay, do you see what's happened right there? That little spot right there is just not, that's been causing issues all the way from the beginning. <laughs> so I'm going to try, try again, try to match that up. Oh, we're going to have a talk with that spot after mm -hmm. the show. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put some off air. titanium. I am not happy with you. Exactly. There will be some discipline okay, for you, spot. So I have... Match that up the best I can, and then I'm just going to blend out the edge a little bit. It's really the best I can do, and I I can put a couple more layers of color on top of it after you know after it dries completely. But that's about all I can do for it right now. Okay, get some of this yellow and like this this little orangey spot right here is kind of very obvious where it starts and stops so I'm just going to kind of try to blend that out a little bit more okay I think I'm pretty happy with that for the most part I can always add more later if I need to once we get our flower on, although I won't be able to really add it much around here. This one could probably use a little, little bit of a help. Give it a second. So you can also use your finger to help blend those edges out, and that's for a long time. That's what I would do. <laughs> I would, I wouldn't, wouldn't use a mop brush. I would just use my finger. So that's totally fine. Just know you've got going to kind of gum up your fingers doing that, but it works well, and you can kind of control how much paint's getting off. Somebody asked that when you have a moment, can you show the bristles on the brush so they can see if they can get something similar? Yes. And it has, it's kind of a fine line between stiff and, and, um, the stiff bristles and the, it's it's a I think it's a natural hair, and I'm not really sure what kind of hair it is. But these ones are the my favorite. I don't I don't get the ones that are um, any other color dark. That this dark brown black is the best one that I found. There's some that come in like a softer, like they're um, they're kind of more this 
lighter color down here and they're not as firm as these they don't work as well to me so it's it's called deerfoot because it's angled but if you look at it from the top down it's perfect circle so it's a circ circular brush that's cut at an angle and that gives you control up here at the tip to put um you know color and i usually when i'm using it for foliage and things i'm usually um, tapping out loading it just just with color at the very tip like that tapping it out and then um, stippling it on to get this kind of i don't know if you can see that here we go we got a pan thing of doodles see And then you can also load it with two different colors. So you can load it with a darker color on the back side here and the lighter color on the top and then dab. And that, that's it's a decorative painting brush. You'll see a lot of decorative painting technique, but I've adapted it and use it. It's, it's one of my favorite brushes, always has been. So I just, I use it for everything, a lot of stuff. All right, so I'm just going to wet these down and let them set before I can. I've already ruined this whole set pretty much multiple times over. I've let the paint dry and I'm, you don't do that because then it kind of kills the absorbency of them. But you're well. I just need to buy another set. Okay, so I didn't end up using any of these. I'm just going to set the ones that I did not use over. And then I usually keep my wet brush, my my brushes that um, take the side cam off first or the side thing off for a second to show. <clears throat> I keep my wet um, brushes, not listening to me. Take this off for a second. There we go. I keep them off to the side here. So as I, uh, I keep my clean brushes on one side and my dirty brushes on the other so that I know which ones I've used. And then I keep these wet while I'm working. And you can see the paper towels have soaked with water there. I keep these wet, make sure that they don't dry out, get, get most of the paint out of them, and then just kind of leave them uh, with water. But you don't want to leave them in your water jar um, while you're waiting. And don't leave them more than an hour or two because then they'll, that paint will start getting dry up in here. So you don't want that to happen. All right, so let's start on our dandelion. I'm, I've been talking and trying to get this to dry while I'm waiting. To, uh, I think that's going to look all right. Okay, so uh, find our halfway mark yeah, here and here, right? Um, the dandelion head, the middle part of it, is actually, well, I should, I should say do the thirds. So it's actually on the third here, and then it's, uh, just above the halfway mark here. So it's just above the halfway mark. So our center of our dandelion is going to be right in here. And then we're going to have, just need to like kind of figure out how big we want it. The center of it doesn't go past the halfway mark. So this, the, the ends of it don't go about, about that far like that. Okay. So these two are going to be even, but then the ones in the middle here are missing because the they there's like a bare spot right in here. It's kind of an oval. So the ones that are right here on top would have come up as as far out as these, right? They would be right here, but those ones are missing. The ones that are that are at the very top of the dandelion. So it looks a little bit like an oval because those tallest ones are missing. And then where it attaches to the stem, the bottom ones are missing uh, right there. So it's also kind of a, almost flattened out right there. So it's, it's kind of does more of a slight oval. It's not quite perfectly round. So somewhere in there, I might make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, somewhere in there. Okay. And then the middle part, including the seed pods are about the same distance here and here. So the seed pods are going to come out to about right here. 
And then just make sure that you've got about that same amount, this, this same amount from there to the end on either side. So, and then you've got it kind of measured out just about right. Then Austin is going to come down here. I'll probably have this a little bit high. In fact, I think I want to. Well, yeah, it's probably going to be fun. The little, I kind of want it low enough though, so that they look like they're flying away. Cause I want some of them to be way out here. So I need to be able to make a diagonal to the center of the, of the flower. So I think I'm going to move the center down just a little bit, just a hair, like right in here. I think that's about right. Yeah, okay. So make sure that you've got your background pretty much the way you want it because once you start doing these dandelions, you're not gonna wanna mess with it. I'm gonna start with the fan brush. And um, this is a... This is a brush you want your paint to be fluid. That's why I put out my fluid um, titanium white instead of my thicker white because it'll just make these a lot easier to do. And then I'm going to make a little bit of a gray. So I'm going to get a little bit of the burnt umber and my ultramarine blue. And my glazy medium. And just add a bunch of water to it. So now I have gray and my white here. So we can test it and see if it's, yeah, you should just be able to see it underneath. And we're wanting to um, define some of these uh, dandelion seed pods that are far back here and give the middle of our, our our white parts like a little bit of a, a little bit of a shadow under here. Most of this is going to be kind of see-through-ish, you know, these are, you can see through the dark, so don't cover all of it solid. You want to be able to see that green and stuff through. And we're going to add a little bit of white to this too. So I'm just kind of going and keeping my brush sort of facing to the center and doing these little soft brush strokes kind of all the way around. And they do kind of look like a little bit of a ring. So I'm going to do some more with white here. They do kind of make almost a ring around the center there. Like that. And then grab some other. And they almost meet in the middle, so kind of overlap some of these. And they're kind of they're kind of doing a flat like thing. So when we do these upper layers, what we can do is kind of doing a line, just a dab and kind of pull so that we're getting these little, it's gonna look like a seed pod. And then what we'll do is we'll put a stem to each one of those. So they make a little bit more sense. Okay, then I'm going to kind of overlap. So I'm gonna go in between and overlap a little bit. I'm not, I do not want a pattern. So that's the main thing. You want to make sure that you're, you're keeping this very random. So every now and then I'm going to kind of twist it from side to side. So I'm getting kind of a different shape out of these. We have a question. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked, is there something? Go ahead and go right up to that center. What? Go ahead. Somebody asked, is there something other than a fan brush they could use to do this? Yeah, you could use the this brush here, the grainer or something like that. It'll look just the same. Okay, I'm gonna get some of that gray. Notice that there, it's I'm leaving 
too much of a ring around it. There is some of this gray, some of these, obviously, because we're seeing all the way through, we're seeing the back side of it too. So make sure that you're doing that gray all the way to the center there. Okay, that's pretty good. And bring this down just a little bit. Remember we said it's not quite, we moved this down, so we need to move the top of the dandelion down too. I'm gonna grab some white here. We'll use this. And I think I want a little bit more blue here. I'm gonna get a little bit of blue and add it to this. So I have a slight blue tint. And I'm gonna rock it side to side so I get a little bit of that. See that? The main thing is to keep it random, so I'm, I do not want to repeat this too often exactly the same way. Keep it very soft. I'm even whispering. <laughs> I do that when I concentrate, sorry. I know it's a problem. I, don't leave me a comment about it, please. <laughs> so many comments about I can't hear you <laughs> did you know that you whisper <laughs> I did know okay and I don't do it on purpose I promise after 400 some on shows I wasn't sure I know I, I, I promise it's not intentional it's not like you know what I think I'm gonna do something really difficult and then not tell people about it <laughs> I mean like whispers so they can't hear me <laughs> I mean the free version is whispers <laughs> it's all whispers. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> okay, so you see what we're doing there, hopefully. Let's do this now before we get too much farther. I want to start adding my stems. So this dark gray, blue gray, ultramarine blue, and... And... Uh, what color? Ultramarine blue and burnt umber. We get a little bit more of the burnt umber here. A little bit of the white. Actually, I could probably use the unbleached titanium for this. I'm going to use that for the center here, and I need to define the center so I know where to attach my little seed pod things. So right in here, make sure my stem is right above it too, just leading straight to it. Okay, and the color is really going to end up being more of a green, so I'm going to get a little bit of the green, make a green with my cobalt teal and my yellow there unbleached titanium. There we go. Yeah, that's closer to what I want. Okay, and then I'm going to use this color for the stem. Just go straight down. I'm going to go right through the Here's there. Right there. Okay, and then I'm going to grab a little bit of the cobalt teal make a little bit more of a green I'm gonna go right in the middle while that's still wet just try to tint the middle just a little bit okay we'll just let that dry it's really like a translucent green color how did that get tilted 
What did I do? You see what I did? It is. I'm not sure how I did that. I'm going to say with paint. Oh, wait a minute here. What there is paint? What is paint? Yeah, I didn't know if I was supposed to form it in the form of a question. <laughs> how did I do that? What yeah. is paint? Mm -hmm. What is painted? Okay. You're so funny. I'm going to go over this with white. Right along that edge. Okay, I'm going to just let that dry. while I'm waiting. Don't want that paint to dry on them. They start to stick to the tips of that one. And this one. Both are lit and it set there too long. dabbing off some of that chalk. Okay. I'm gonna wipe these off because I, I don't need them. Okay. Alright, that's about right there. Oh, I think what it is, I'm looking at it over there. And it's not, it's not crooked when I look at it here. I made the mistake of looking at it up there. Okay, so okay. it looks crooked there, but it's not. So we don't have crooked. to hang it kind of no. awkward? No, okay. we need to look at it from the side. I was just going to kind of their head tilted. A, a skew. <laughs> Cut the canvas so it looks, you know, right. proportion, you know, squared off. Right, right. I think that's a simpler thing to do. Right. Okay. Check. I'll stop talking now. <laughs> All right. Can you make a darker gray green? What? Nothing. <laughs> I'm going to make a darker gray green here with the ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And then I added a little bit of the uh, teal and yellow here to it to make it a little bit green. I'm just going to use this to make those leaves that are hanging down from this so they're over the top of our stem and come in there and they also happen to be kind of similar to the color that we're doing on our thing over here right so i'm going to get a little bit of the darker need a little contrast back here and then up in here this area is very very dark so i'm gonna get the full strength with no white in it and just darken up that ultramarine blue I'm going to add a little bit of the a uh, little bit of the quinacridone magenta to the blue before I bring it over here so it's more of a purple and then mixing that with my burnt umber and it's going to pull out from the middle What? Dom is quick with the hammer tonight. Good. Thank you, Dom. She's playing whack a troll. She's whack a troll? Whack a troll, yeah. A lot of trolls tonight. And she's winning. I think the score is like 4 nothing. <laughs> she's beating me. Good job, Dom. We do need more moderators to help. We Especially on the bigger live streams, we need. Somebody's asked about what level 
painting would you put this at? I would say this one is going to be more along the five or six, I would say. I don't think so far it's been particularly difficult. Um, but some people have trouble using the liner brush, so that's why I say, you know, if you, if you don't... Uh, if you don't have a lot of experience using a liner brush, it can be a little bit trickier, when we, especially when we get to these next few parts. Okay, so there's that part that's hanging down. I'm doing the dark, kind of, this is really the stuff that's in between, that's the, kind of the back layer, that this is not the front layer. Um, so we're just kind of laying the groundwork from our upper layers to go here and slowly encroaching in on this middle area here that we've got going on. And okay. So let's go back to my color here. Get some white and that gray. And I need to go over the top of this, so I've already got my... Make sure that you keep it kind of light so that you can still see the stuff through. So I started with the gray, and now I'm going to the white. White, pure white. White, white, pure white. I don't know why I said that three times. little trout. Exactly. <laughs> white, white, pure white. <laughs> we'll see if anybody gets a reference to that oh, without okay. telling them. If they do, they get bonus points tonight. Ooh, that, that might qualify them as a lead candidate for moderator. Yep. Going <laughs> <laughs> to be real scientific about it. <sighs> do you know your Monty Python references? Okay. Check. You know your Looney Tunes <laughs> references. <laughs> okay. Uh, now this outer one, there is some of the gray, but it's more, it's mostly white. So I'm going to use just a little bit of that gray. In fact, I'm going to get a little bit of the blue. I see kind of a bluish color to it. So, so far I've just kind of done the inner part here, and now I'm going to start doing the outer edge of this dandelion. So I'm going to pull from the tip out, create a soft fuzzy edge. And if your brush is not giving you these super fine lines, then just you may have to pull out your liner brush and do it with your liner brush by hand. Hopefully, this will work for you though. This fan brush is the first time I've used it. This is this one. It's working really well for this. So happy with it. Okay, I'm just going to keep on making it bigger and bigger until I get it to the size I want, which is about to the halfway mark, so we've got a little bit, little ways to go still. And remember, this center part is about equal to where it, so it needs to come out to about right here. So I'm just going to keep on going and do another layer out here. Left a little bit of a space from that one before. Just a little. And using kind of the edge of my brush here and there to create that kind of a flat look from that we're seeing from the ones from the side. Okay, <clears throat> I've been writing it down yet, but I will this time. Okay. Which is, what is the name of your water? Oh, Bucket. Richardson is the brand. I oh, that's right. I did. I think I took pictures of it. What did I take a picture of? Oh, okay. Screenshots. I think I just got this out, out of, out of well, shape right here. I did. I did do that.
try that again. Okay, I think that's pretty close to the shape. It's almost round, not quite. And then I'm going to get the bright white here and just pick out a few spots just inside, starting from just inside and pulling out. Maybe what I want to do first is do some of my stems out. So let's do the stems. Oh, I need some of this brown if I have any left in that gray from the ultramarine blue and burnt umber mixture here. So I want that color. Using my thinnest brush. And I'm going to do tiny little spikes. So some of these are going to be real short, right? So they're going to be the ones going to the ones. If they don't, if you can't see it, then you need to adjust your color, either darker or lighter. So I'm going to go a little bit darker, I think, because I've got a lot of light color on here, right? So I'm going to go a little bit darker with this and see if that shows up. There we go. And it shouldn't be super obvious because these are the ones that are like underneath very thin, small ones. So um, start out short. Do the ones that are kind of facing away from us. Right. And then I'm going to continue on. And do... Looks like they go. If you've got like a real obvious area like this, so I want to scent that in down like that and content connect, start connecting these to something. They don't all have to be, you know, matched up, but if you've got a real obvious one, then it's good, it'll help it to have something connecting to it. And these are really fine. And you're going to want to change your direction so that they are always facing in. Make sure you're shifting your brush so that it's Pointing in towards the center. And then they should go out all the way to the end. It's okay if you cover over all of your things. We're not going to, we haven't done our upper layer of white yet. So this is going to be the under side. Get some of that white. And a lot of them here, we're seeing the, we're not seeing as much of the inside of it. Down here we are, because these are empty right here. So I'm wanting to, I'm going to get some white now. I'm going to really 
do some obvious. Lines. These would be the ones that are closest to us. Okay. We'll call that good. Then there are these little dots where the ends of some of these happen. So I'm going to do that. Well, actually, I need to do that last. Take that back. Okay. Ultramarine blue, burnt umber. A little bit of quinacridone magenta. Making a dark, dark black. It's got a purple tone to it. Like a purple tint. Okay. Let's get my white. I want to do these ones that are way out here. So there's do the little stem. Oops, I'm totally off camera. Sorry. I did not realize we'd zoomed in. I'll do that again. I need to do this, let this dry. Okay. Little dots there with the yellow oxide and burnt umber. Kind of go at a diagonal. Okay, let's let that dry. Get back to the stems here. Start with white. Just trying to get the water off my brush there so it doesn't drip on anything. So I'll do one right here. So this was our smallest one, but way out here, little baby one. It's probably a little bit big. One right here, and then we're going to do our little starburst. Everything lean it into the middle. Okay, fine little baby hairs. Let's do this one facing this way. Very fine little line and then little wispies. Going out and then not all of them are gonna be all the way around. Like some of most of these are gonna be viewed from the side and so they're gonna look like a little half of a star almost, you know, like you're seeing it from the side. There's going to be a few little wispies coming down, but for the most part, they're going to be My background turned out way more rainbowy than that. 
<laughs> the example one. I got a little happy with my colors. Oh, well. <clears throat> it's very colorful. I must have been in a colorful mood tonight. It's okay. Now, if I wanted to, I could dole it down. I could glaze over everything with um with a little bit of color. Now, I don't know that I'm going to do that, but you know, if I don't want it, if I want it closer to the reference photo, <clears throat> I could take like a little bit of a of a warm brown or something like that and just glaze very thinly over the whole thing. Um, and uh, oh, that took off the color. I'm having so much trouble with that tonight. My chalk took off the color when I drew over here. Oh, no. Right there, that. I'm having a lot of trouble with this canvas tonight. Normally I don't have this trouble, so I'm thinking that it's just this, this one, this batch maybe. I don't know. To tell them. See it wanting to try to lift right there too. So I'm just putting some color on there, like I did over here. Didn't get to stick. Um, so anyhow, back to what I was saying. Um, you could take, I could take this large brush, and um, I might do just a little bit of it. What I'm talking about, a little bit of yellow oxide, a little bit of burnt sienna, maybe. Just a color that'll kind of dull it just slightly, and then a lot of glazing medium. I don't need a lot of the color for this, but I can just kind of go over all of it. You can see, especially in this blue area, it's going to tone it down so it's not quite so bright. And also my yellow area too. It's not going to hurt my, my flower any. In fact, I might do it a little bit over the top of my flower too. Let's do a little bit of it over the top. This is dry enough now. I can tint the center there into everything just a little bit. And I can do this as many times as I want until I get it to the right amount of dullness, you know. Just keep kind of adding some of that duller color on top. Duller color, that's the rhymes. <coughs> you might want to go get a snack, hun, because we got at least another half hour here. It's going a little bit longer than I anticipated. My painting supplies are doing okay over here. You're doing all right? I'm about halfway through. A bottle of wine? No. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yep, yeah, a glass of wine. Yep, yeah, about halfway through your glass of wine. All right. Love it. Yes, a glass. Not a bottle. Not a okay. bottle. <laughs> I tease. I do. I, I, I've gotten people come concerned about you. Drinking so much, I'm like no, he doesn't. <laughs> I tease him. It's not a, it's not a problem. Trust me, I wouldn't laugh about it if it was. I've been working on this class for an hour and a half. Well, actually, two hours now, <laughs> and I'm halfway through, so I'm hitting it hard tonight. <laughs> Slow me down. Okay. I just have to be careful because this paint's still wet that I just put on there, but it's doing okay, so I'm not going to be too much. It's not lifting my paint off my brush, so. Paint's laying down fine. Okay, so the, the finished ones, the, like the big ones, they're going to be, or finished ones. The ones that are, you know, full size are going to be fairly long. So. There. 
There's two of them that are side by side right here, so I'm trying to get them in here. Just make sure that you're pulling all the way from the center little thing here. And some of them are kind of rounded out. So they're curving out towards the center a little bit. Curving out from the center, I should say. Now somebody had asked earlier, and I forgot to ask, about uh, using a... Uh a paint pen or something like that to do some of this detail work? Is that legal? It's legal. You, you, you're you going to be hard-pressed to find a pen this fine, though. So that's, you're not going to be able to get it quite this thin. How you doing? <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> not fine that way. Oh, sorry. are actually way longer than I'm doing. I need to dip it up here. Tell us again what size brush that is. 18 opt. That is skinny. Yep. Yep. Yep, it is. And really you need to do this part with the with the small brush. There's you can't mix the fan brush or anything. Shortcuts for this part. <clears throat> These little baby wispies need to be done by hand. Coming up from the top here. Get blown out from the center. Let me grab a little bit of that dark color for these. This one's center, and this one's center, kind of covered up by the or the seed pod part is kind of covered up by the ones in front. This one's right here. Get some brown. Oh, that all dried up. A little bit of that, so I need to do these dark ends here. And I'm literally just kind of setting my brush down and lifting to create that shape. Do I need to zoom in at all? Can they see okay?
I don't know. I got most of these on here. I just got a couple more that I have to add over here, but. Use a little bit of the unbleached titanium with this. Maybe a little bit of the yellow. Oh, that was good. Wow. Sorry about that. It didn't even wiggle. It just flopped. I know. I know how I did that. Again, some of the yellow added to this purpley color. For sale, slightly used, mister. <laughs> Only been dropped a couple of times. As seen on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I get some of that darker color and add that? Come on. One side of this. These ones that are closer to us had a little bit more of a yellow and just adding a little bit of the darker shadow around them. And some of them kind of turn a little bit. So this one is right here and I don't have the, so I put in some that are not there yet. So if you're wondering what I'm doing there, that's just putting in ones that are there, but the flower's not put in yet. She'll add it here in a minute. Oops. Not that bright. I'm going to go back in here with the bright white. Some of these were like a little bit of the darker, you know, color. And I'm just going to add a few of the bright white, like right in the middle area where they're emerging. Make sure they're got a little highlight. And that's the kind of thing that I, you know, wouldn't have bothered with for the easier version, you know, and I think I used, uh, I can't remember. I think I used a, I don't think I used a Q-tip, but I used something else like that, something to simplify it. Okay. So Let me get a round brush here and some of my burnt sienna and burnt umber. A little bit of the unbleached titanium. Not too much. I want it to be pretty dark. And then I'm going to create my upper layer of 
of seed pods. I'm going to get kind of a lighter version here, and I'm going to do a few lines through this with the lighter version. Okay, just a few. And then grab that darker color. I'm going to set it down and pull out. If it doesn't show up, just need a little bit more of the lighter color. So there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and go around and do several of these all the way around and get a little bit of a lighter color and do some shorter ones and make sure they, they go right to that center part. So they're going to be right in here. And then every single one of these is going to have a white line coming out of it. So these ones that I just did, I need to have these white lines coming out of the tips. These are the seed pods like attached. So I did them a little bit shorter, you can see. So you can see where the white attaches. Thick right there. And I can put a little highlight on some of these if I need to. And I'm just going to kind of obscure it just a little bit. So there's some random white things in there, but you can see that each one of those. And if I need to, which I probably do, I'm going to go back in and kind of <coughs> add a little bit white, light, lighter highlight to the centers of these, especially kind of right where it attaches. A little highlight. In there. I'm going to cover my paint's getting sticky. way in and attaching and these should be kind of you know some of them will be closer to the middle than others so they're not all detaching and perfectly you know same spots what are you laughing at getting some of the dark. Come back in with the dark in the middle of these dots here. What you laughing at him? Go from a very soft whisper to really loud to just a normal voice very quickly. So Sorry. I've got everything cranked up to pick you up and then all of a sudden, wow. Sorry. It's okay. I'm just wearing headphones. <clears throat> just what? I'm just wearing headphones. Oh. Okay. What? 
Sorry. If it's okay. I'm going to dab in some highlights on the center of this. And then around. You can see just a little bit of it through. Through these. All right, so let's grab the white and for these ones that we just did here, I'm gonna do their open. And then right in the middle, there's gonna be a little teeny tiny dot, dunk dot. following these little lines out and then creating a little fuzzies. And these ones are close. These ones that we're seeing the opening are closer to us. And we've got the little, little dark centers of some of them. We're not seeing all the dark centers, but these ones are facing away from us enough that we're seeing just this little dark dot. And I've probably made these way too small. Looking up. Maybe not. They probably need to be closer to this size. That will elongate there. Whatever they are. It's hard working white on white because the changes are really subtle. So if you've covered too much of your background up at this point, then these are not going to show up. So you just kind of have to make sure that you've left just enough of that dark background showing so that when we do this we can see these little hairs happening. Hmm. Hmm? <laughs> I don't know why you didn't kick her off your chair. It's your own fault for being too nice. Our cat is taking up more than half of Mark's chair. She's sleeping so peacefully, though. I know. You're really too nice. She was giving you those little cat and boots, cow, cow eyes. Yeah. When he walked up, she's like, oh, are you going to join me? Okay. So sweet. You weren't going to take my chair, were you? You can do that to me. Okay. It's turning out all right. This is the point where I'm like, okay, I can see it, you know? <laughs> it's like you go through this whole thing where everything, it looks ugly. It's kind of... Like, I don't know, that's going to work. And then all of a sudden you start to magically emerge from that forest of <laughs> doubt. <laughs> and you're like, okay, it's working. <laughs> I'm, I can see it happening now. We're 
we're getting there. Sorry for a longer one on a Tuesday night, but. It's fine. There's no Oak Island right now, so. Yeah, you got nowhere to be. No big deal. Okay. No pressure. Now that he's working from home, too, you didn't have as much of a commute. <laughs> from 75 minutes to 75 seconds it's pretty nice <laughs> it's okay. yeah it's pretty it's pretty gonna be super hard sad i'm probably with you to go back to work and start rolling again remember how to get there <laughs> Okay, so I'm just layering um, these kind of, they're not, they're not making like rows necessarily, but you're seeing, you're seeing kind of um, a section of them kind of all in the same general, you know, length. So, and then I want to put these little centers in some of them. So before your white dries, there is a flying seed without the little wispies on it. Oh, right here. Okay, thank you. We were taking bets to see if you would uh, notice it, or not. But yeah, I probably, I probably would have. Maybe, maybe at the very end. No telling. Let's do it. Let's do that. Okay. And I went over this area with that burnt sienna, so you have to go back in and add some of your white, brighter white back over it. I think that was a really good idea to do that with the burnt sienna, though. Even if you don't want to tone down your background, I think I would still do that because it helped kind of tone all this a little bit darker so that now that this white is really popping off of it. This one's got a few of the little hairs kind of coming up over it. Both of these do. And these ones, we're not seeing the centers of them. They're farther away from us, so. We're just seeing them from the side, mostly. I'm going to do some little wispies now. It's easier to get the fine lines for if you pull from the outside, um, inside out, I should say. 
where you end, where you start. Your line is always going to be thicker than when you where you end it. So where I start it here is going to be thicker than this outer tip. So, but I'm kind of cheating because I have so fast. And it's okay if they're not all completely defined. In fact, it's probably better if they're not. That way it'll look a little bit more natural. So let some of them be just be random. Don't try to define every single one because then it'll just look a little bit fake. So what I'm saying is don't make every single one of these little starburst things just a perfect little starburst, you know. Because especially out here, they're all getting jumbled together. We're not seeing the defined anything super defined. Everything's kind of all mixed together. Because we're seeing the underside, we're seeing the top layers, we're seeing everything kind of all jumbled up. So. so each dandelion head has between 150 and 200 seed pods. According to the intern web, the University of Michigan, or sorry, Michigan State University. Who was it had to count them? Some undergrad student was given that task by <laughs> a professor. <laughs> to lay them all out oh. and count them all. So you want to be a botanist? <laughs> well, here you go. Count the seeds. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, let's do one more layer on the stem here. Let me get some white here. And turn it so I can get a good line here. I go up the side there and I'm going to wipe my brush off and then I'm just going to pull that paint in towards the middle a little bit with kind of just a damp brush. Get a little bit of this, if I can find any of the gray. Get some of the green. Do another layer of the green kind of in the middle. Is that kind of translucency? There we go. And then this side should be just a little bit darker. And if it's not, you can, I'm gonna widen this out just a little bit because this part is bugging me. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the yellow oxide here. Go over that just a little bit right there. They're pretty much the same width all the way down. So I widened it out just a little bit right there to cover that part where I picked up the paint. And then I can use this white yellow to again go back in here and add some highlights in between on the top of the seed head. It's kind of like dimpled. Dimpled and pimpled. I don't know. So that'll help that. And then if you want to, I'm going to flatter a little bit just because I can. And I think it'll add to the 
overall look. All right, we used a lot of brushes. I'm gonna get this stiffer bristled fan brush because it'll splatter a little bit easier for me. And just get some of that yellow oxide yellow with my white here. Not too bright. I want it to be kind of subtle. But it needs to be thin. See how it's just adding just a little bit of something to background. I'm gonna call that good. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll subscribe, come back and watch again with us another time. We do live streams twice a week right now, 2020. If you're watching five years from now, there's no telling, but uh, yeah. give it a thumbs up and uh, we will uh, be back on Saturday. We're going to be doing that beach scene. And then, like I said, if you want to see the other videos that we've got coming up, you can check those out on page on our homepage there. Uh, I'm going to use this color, a little bit of zinc white. See if I can get a little something over the top of that one that's still looking at me. Sounds like Spencer's home from work. Mm -hmm. Maybe add a few. Whatever. At this point, you can still, you can still tone down. You know, some of this if you want to. I notice this is a lot brighter yellow than is in our photograph. So we could go back through and use a little bit of that zinc white with my. Maybe that color that we used for our splatters and there's weird. I think that one still had green in it. Toning it just like we did the, just like we did the um, burnt sienna. You can go back the opposite way and do it with the white too. So that's better. I think it's a little softer. Okay, I'm gonna. Everybody's getting in the bath here. We're gonna go wash the brushes out really good. <laughs> so again, thanks for watching with us and. Uh, we will, uh, if you want the materials that we used, uh, there's links down in the description that help our channel out. So if you buy through the, our links on Amazon or Blick or the Brush Guys, we get a small um, percentage of the sale. We don't get, it doesn't increase your price of your items at all. They just um, do it as a thank you to the artists who are referring people to their website. So um, it's just a nice way to easily support our channel without having to do anything extra really um so anyhow hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on saturday thanks for watching take care bye